Hi everybody, in this episode we are going to be talking to Jay and Dan from TT Combat about what's happening with Carnivale, Rumble Slam, and on top of that we have a mega prize to give away. Do -do -do. Everything you see on this table is going to be won by one lucky winner. Have a look at some of it here. So we've got houses, we've got roadways, we've got destroyed houses, we've got uh, gate bridges, we've got buildings, we've got sci-fi stuff. Ah, okay, I can't even count everything that's on here. There'll be a list below. Uh, get your comments in on Beast of War, Facebook, or YouTube for your chance to win. We'll see you in the rest of the show. Good morning, Beasts. It's weekender time. I mean, one thing. We're going to get the kettle on. <laughs> mm. on okay, in. so let me get the kettle on. And Justin, yeah. I shall rock a Bristol Vanguard mug this morning. Do you want a red one? Uh, yeah, I'll take the red one. A red one for Justin. It's boot camp time. Well, I say it's boot camp time. It's boot or first boot camp prep time. Our first boot camp is on the 11th of November. Yep. We still have some tickets left for that. It's going to be a zombie weekend. Yes. You're going to get copies of The Walking Dead, and it's going to be all kinds of awesome. We have Ronnie Renton's going to be here, so it's going to be great crack. We also, have, we also have Ben from Foreground, Ben and Cab from Foreground are going Thanks to be here. Foreground. Yeah, so uh, it's a great weekend. We'll have a link if you're interested in coming along to that boot camp. We do have a few tickets left. You don't have to be a backstage or not. In fact, by buying a ticket, we throw in six months backstage access for free so as you can get involved in all of the planning and stuff like that there they're all getting together and organizing lifts and yeah taxis and whatever right what that does mean however kettle spoiled good is that we're getting prepped for it so all of this stuff is all getting all boxed up ready to go to the the lockups um this is stuff that's been kept because it may well be used for this boot camp or for, for the next project. one or for something yep. else. On through here we're having a big change now. We can actually breathe again. <laughs> yeah, well as you can see in the background we've put John to work getting everything tidied yeah. up and put away. Hi John. So, hi John. Uh, so everything everything's getting ready. You can almost there's a palpable excitement in the studios now because we've spent we've spent the whole year because it was last year was the last boot camp, yep, wasn't it? It was. it was actually before the new year, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was. so the last so we spent the whole year till now working on all this other stuff and campaigns and the new piece of war site that we're still working on will be all for some months. Weeks, which means weeks. stuff has been piling and piling mm. and piling and piling up. But we got lonely. <laughs> and then with the with the winter setting in and with uh, with a trip to Ireland being awesome in the winter because you know it's when all the banshees and things like that all start to start to creep out and all of the the fantasy the the, the core fantastical elements of Ireland start to bubble up during the winter. We thought we're we're lonely. We we need company. We need so protection. We, Basically, we need cannon fodder to throw at the banshees. <laughs> <laughs> so we reached out and we thought we'd do two boot camps. So the first one is the Walking Dead. It's the eleventh of November. Like I said, we still have some tickets left for that. So by all means, if you fancy spend a weekend with us, you're completely looked after. Apologies. I feel like a goblin in a dungeon, Justin. <laughs> and flight mode and silenced. Right. Okay. Apologies. So uh, you're completely looked after for the entire weekend. So it includes the, all the accommodation, and could, includes your food, and you get a big box of goodies, including the, the, all the game, an expansion, there's booster packs, there's a load of stuff in there. And then in December, December 9th, yes. we have the Drop Fleet Commander, um, but it's, it's all gone. It's, it's all, all gone. sold out. It's, it's, all, out. it's all sold out. Right. So, in here, we are now starting the process of converting it into a rural zombie scene. So, we've been kind of imagining our favourite, um, our, our favourite, not only clips from The Walking Dead, but I, I'm, I'm kind of expanding it out, and I can't get the evil dead out of my mind. Yeah. So it's um so that whole ash and the rural forest and stuff like that there, we're we're having a look at that. So we're expecting a delivery of uh twenty eight scale buildings. So there'll be things like barns, yep. wooden houses, gas log, stations hopefully. log cabin, gas oh, station yeah. as well. We're, we're getting a log cabin. We're gonna do nice. the evil dead log cabin as well. Um uh, perhaps even a bit of a trailer park out in the out in the oh, country. Because cool. remember this is where everybody's kind of ran to escape. Right. Well, if you think, there's going to be very few people left alive in the cities. You know, well, 
very few people left in the cities, but tons of zombies. Yes. So we're, 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 we've got a load of things in our mind. We also have feature tables and stuff like that that we're going to do. So we have, we have, we think, probably some of the best the tables that you're ever going to play on for, for a zombie apocalypse. We're really looking forward to this. Right, um, otherwise, Lance is on camera. He's going to be joining us very shortly to talk about uh, some community stuff. This this weekender has probably one of the biggest prizes we have ever seen. Probably should have mentioned that at the start, but if it, but stay tuned because there is a prize that will completely fit out your hobby room pretty much, but according to everything that's on this. So stay tuned. He'll tell you about it in a minute. Um, well, I, actually, I've already told him about it because I did a little pre-roll clip. <laughs> he never even told me. And then finally, we have Tom. Hi, Tom. And Tom's beavering away in there. Code, right. Code. Code. Um, uh, Give us, give us the length of time of the little intro, and then we'll, we'll get our cups of tea and we'll meet you in there. We're, we, we've got our cup of... Mm, and we're ready to go. Right, let's get some game on. Before that, um, you obviously know Justin, Ben, and let me introduce Lance, if you haven't met Lance yet. Um, Lance is, we, we, we don't know how, how to describe Lance. You know, <laughs> he, you know, he's kind of like, Ben, what is he? Like, he, like community nurse. <laughs> I, I was going with the word, words beast buddy. I think that he's, makes he's sense, right? He's the beast right, yeah? buddy. So all the community <laughs> stuff that we've got going on right now is all being masterminded by Lance. So he's kind of like, he's kind of like your concierge. Isn't that it? So, <laughs> if Beast of War is your digital concierge, the Lance, Lance is your is your your human Beast of War concierge. So, so you know all these kind of little community initiatives and things like that. There, they all run through him. If you've got a rash or something, you don't know what to do with it. Lance will find a nice <laughs> herbal product to sort that out. Warren, we agree. We would like, never <laughs> speak of that again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Lance is in because we've got a couple of updates that we want to run with before we start getting stuck into the news. So, Lance, um, yes. what we got coming up? We've got coming up the Hobby Win. Now, this is a project that has been created by Mage mm -hmm. of the forums, and James has a great idea because what is happening is we want to create a themed week. Mm -hmm. uh, for Halloween. We want mm -hmm. to encourage people to paint their miniatures, kit bash, and make mini di dioramas. Yeah. And I think as a community feature, I think we should do some pumpkin carving. Pumpkin carving? <laughs> I think right. if, any okay. if anyone well, can make a pumpkin carving of Nogan's head, <laughs> yep. whoa, 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 we could maybe get a winner. You, you want people to <laughs> carve a pumpkin a la Justin. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> it's very it's very easy. You just start with a small bowling ball, really. You get a bowling ball and you take it up into the country and you roll the front of it around in the moss for a while and then you lift it up and you and you have an immediate Justin. So it's like um, uh, right, so what what is it what is this called? Is it the Halloween challenge or what what do we go. call it? Uh, for anyone that's wondering where it is, it's in the, the Hobby and Painting Town Square, a proposed month long event, uh, or theme. Hobbyween. Okay. Or, yeah, Hobbyween. Right, so Lance, um, yeah. Hobbyween then, right? Yes. So when is it, and, and what do people do on the run-up to it? I think we'll start it on September the 19th, and we'll run it for six weeks, which uh -huh. will end on November the 1st. Okay. So that means that everything will run up to Halloween, mm -hmm. and we will commence judging, and if we have any prizes, we'll hand them out as well. Yep. Um, on November the 1st. We will close it on November 1st, ready for Halloween, just after Halloween. Okay, so um, on the run up to it, what are people supposed to do? Are they supposed to go into that thread, start their own threads? Or? I think it'd be best if we started our own threads with the title Hobbyween. Hobbyween, uh -huh. yeah. And always use the tags. We want the enthusiasm. We want to promote tags a lot more. So if you tag your content under ha Hobbyween, we should be good to go. Yeah, or if you don't, he has to do it for you. So it's not a problem. <laughs> yeah. He's I'm concierge, like that, isn't he? Right? So, uh, so, uh, so people go in, they create their hobby ween threads between now and then. So they get stuck in. Yep. And the, the basic themes are, what, monsters? So I've come up with four kind of themes that we can go as categories for each one. Okay. So the first one is the murdering miniature. So the best painted Halloween miniature, the most scariest miniature that you can make. Right, okay. Uh, I even think that if you can make it black and white... It'd be pretty cool as well. Uh, if you yeah. can manage that, that'd be 
bonus points, perhaps. Uh, that, that'd take all of about five minutes. We just prime it black and <laughs> hit it from an angle of zenith lighting for the grey, and we're, yeah. we're done. I, I don't That's know. You could I think of... even I'll enter that one. <laughs> I, I think you could actually go sort of Sin City on it, just put a single colour in there yeah. to actually bring a detail yeah, right. out. It has to be red, doesn't it? It has to be red. Yeah. red. Now, that's, that's not a requirement. It's any painted kind of uh, miniature that's going to suit Halloween. Yeah. Yep. So it's all the monsters, ghosts, things like yep. that. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, second one is killer kit bashing. So uh -huh. creating your own Frankenstein monster out of anything. Oh, oh that's interesting. So kit bashing together a yeah. monster. Okay, so I need to hide the heads of myself that we had sculpted up because yeah. you might end up putting on <laughs> some think, horrifying. I think the good thing yeah. about this is you don't even have to be good. Justin, I'm going to get your I'm going to get your head and put it on my tanuki. <laughs> this is where I'm going to put it. So it's like, <laughs> uh, and in case you're wondering, yes, he was tickled before the show. So okay, <laughs> I think for this is. Uh, even if you're not good at kit bashing, Frankenstein's monster was pretty like ripped apart anyway. Yep. Mm. So it could it could look terrible and look amazing at the same time. Awesome. Yep. So we have the the painting competition. We have the kit bashing. Yeah. And devious diorama. So the best diorama on the table or terrain that we can use for the best game. Mm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So if if you know how to build, you know the ultimate haunted house to put on your gaming table, I'm guessing that's where that's going to go. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Do you know? I've been having, I have these terrible dreams. Right. right. Okay. I'm not in them. <laughs> no. Say, I'm, I'm hoping now. I'm not no, in no, them. no, 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 no. They're my good dreams, Justin. Oh, okay. So <laughs> okay, um, great, the, great. I have these terrifying dreams. I get them fairly regular, right? Mm. The scariest thing for me is poltergeists. I find poltergeists absolutely terrifying. So things like the the Enfield haunting and mm. stuff like that, they really, really creep me out. And last night, um, I had the, I had this nightmare again. And the, the, the nightmares are, are always about something unseen trying to drag me, uh, drag at me into a room. And because you're sleeping, do you know that inability to run away yeah. and that inability to you're move? running in custard? It just, yeah, it, just, yeah. it gives it even more of a sensation. Yeah. And I find the whole thing of... You know, of, of, of chairs moving by themselves and stuff like that. Absolutely terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. So I'm thinking a diorama with no minis in it. All but right. a diorama with lots of little fishing wires. <laughs> you set it all up, and then, and then whenever you're presenting it to people, you have a little bundle of fishing wires at the back, and you just go, tug! And the whole thing goes like that. So uh, no, there's, there's see, all kinds of ways you could do this. You see, yeah. I'm going completely off, to, off the, the rails here, but what I want someone to do is create a, an office chair and actually make it an RC car type thing. Oh. So I can just have it wheeling around the office, scaring the scare, scaring the crap out of yeah. scare, 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 Scaring the what? Scaring the what, Justin? Scaring the crap <laughs> okay. And then and then you have this this Final. amazing fourth category there. Final is paranormal pumpkins. Paranormal pumpkins. Yeah. I, I actually quite like this. I, I would imagine pumpkins. most people are going to be carving pumpkins anyway. Or a turnip. Turnips, yeah. Why, why <laughs> if turnip? you like me, it, I, you never carved a turnip. No, I've never, I've never carved another if pumpkin or turnip. You've never carved a, a pumpkin or a turnip? No. Tell you what, right, Justin, you come from the country, you carve turnips. Right, right, we carve turnips over here, but we're going to get you a pumpkin, right. okay? And we're going to film Justin carving his own pumpkin, okay? All right, I'm game. And uh, so he'll get into this, so Justin will do his own entry. Maybe we should do our all of us do pumpkins maybe oh, we'll see. I, I just have so much more fun imagine him the man who will not eat or touch veg <laughs> cleaning out a pumpkin this is going to be amazing especially when I make him eat a bit of it it's going to be great <laughs> right so uh, I think I'm going to get my big kitchen knives out and just go <laughs> so um, uh, again the, the, your people obviously it depends on whether you can get a hold of a pumpkin. Now, pumpkins tend to be a couple of weeks before Halloween, so yeah. I'm not expecting very many entries straight off the bat on that front. Sorry, someone will get a squash. Yeah. You could carve a squash if you want to do that. Yeah. Or a marrow. What's a marrow? What's a marrow? Yeah. Oh, I'd give up. i give up. <laughs> so, I, I, do, you remember, do you know the, the worst nightmares you've ever had? That's been a marrow. Okay. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't remember the worst dreams I have. Uh, you, well, that's uh, my, my because that's actually be blocks them out. That's because there was a marrow in it, right? Uh, so it's <laughs> right. 
Um, so people can get stuck in now, yeah. and then we're going to be giving out awards and maybe prizes and stuff like that on November first. Yeah. Name your topics: Hobbyween and tag them as Hobbyween, and we'll know where to find them. Okay. okay. Awesome. Right. In uh, other another kind of a community update. The just to remind you, the terrain uh, the terrain challenge is now finished. That's the scatter terrain challenge that we've just done. Uh, judging has already been underway. Okay, so another another two weeks. And then we will be will be announcing all of the winners. Um, there is going to be another one. So we're going to we're now looking like we're going to run four of these a year. Um, so the next one is uh, going to be called. Uh, it's it's its theme is freshwater terrain. Mm. Okay, so anything associated with fresh water. So that could be um, bridges, rivers, jetties. Boats, um, barrels, waterfalls, swampland, anything like that there. Just not stuff that's nautical. That'll be a category of its own at some point. So um, Yeah, I did see one comment. Uh, someone was actually planning to cheat that by doing a coastline. But it's the coastline of a very, very large lake. Yes, absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. You can do that. Lake it's fresh water. Yeah, it's fresh yeah. water. We, we try to keep these categories because um, open because we're, like we want you to build terrain. And we know that you guys play all sorts of games, um, so fancy games, historical games, sci-fi games, punk and horror games. So we're, we're trying to keep categories open that encourage you to create terrain for your games. So, we're, so what we're trying to avoid is categories that kind of really zero in on something mm. that then you, you go, well, I, I, I wouldn't have any purpose for that. Yeah. Because the, the objective of this is just for you to, to create. To include everyone. Yeah, mm. create great pieces of terrain. Get your sleeves rolled up and get stuck in. So we'll be picking the launch date for that um, very shortly, I would imagine. It'll run for about six weeks or so, and um, but we will give you plenty of notice, and we'll you'll you'll see the website redecorated, ready for the the next terrain challenge. Um, if you have any questions about it in the meantime, reach out to Lance mm -hmm. on the site mm -hmm. uh, yep. at Lance W. Or Lancors, L A N C O R Z. L A N C O R Z. Yep. Right. I'll bring it up. <laughs> We're going to take a very quick, uh, very quick break to tell you about some hubs, and then the three of us are going to get stuck into what's going on in the world of gaming. From Viking halls to the cities of the future, terrain buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastsofwar.com. It's time for 28mm World War II action. Will you recreate history or reshape it your way? On the Bolt Action Hub at beastsofwar.com. Welcome back. So, gents, what is happening in the world, Ben? Oh, uh, some really cool stuff going on in the news uh, this week. Uh, the first stuff is from uh, Spartan Games. And uh, they've been showing off exactly what they're going to be doing with expansion packs and things like mm -hmm. that when it comes to Halo Ground Command. Yep. Um, so they showed off a couple of different packs and things like that. Um, the first ones were for the Covenant, which is very, very cool. They're going to yeah. get some uh, some Hunters, which are some of my favorite enemies in the Halo world, which are very, very awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll also get a couple of different types of Ghosts as well. Mm -hmm. So there's the uh, Vanguard Ghosts there, which are driven by the Elites. And then you've got the Scout Ghosts, which are driven by the Grunts as well. So you've got two different types going on. It's pretty awesome. This is just lovely, isn't it? Very, yeah. Cool. Very, very cool. Yeah, um, it's all then... fantastic. It all looks really nicely detailed and things like that. We're starting to see the first um, sort of people painting up their sets and things. Yeah. So um, you should be able to see it in the forums and stuff. And uh, hopefully we'll check back and see what people's work is and things. Yeah. So, okay, as... so we also have warthogs there as well. Yeah, so uh, the UNSC don't get like a breadth of stuff, but they get lots of options for their Warthog. Um, yeah. So the Warthog, which you know is obviously a very iconic vehicle in yeah. the Halo mm -hmm. uh, universe. So it's coming with uh, rocket launchers, missile pods, uh, which were always crazy in the game, and they always blew you up rather than anyone else. Yep. Um, there's the Gauss Cannon, and there's also the Chain Gun. So there's a variety of different options there for dealing with different threats and things on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. I was forever rolling warthogs. Yep. <laughs> I, 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 I just couldn't keep a warthog sitting upright. I was forever yeah. rolling them over. <laughs> all right, sorry, I, I thought you meant rolling them as in any time there was one. It was just like, car, jump again, going, bye no, guys. No, 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 no. I, I mean, literally, yeah. As soon as I saw a warthog, I jumped in it. And then I got then about then three over. feet before it rolled over on me. So it's, uh, uh, Did I see some terrain pieces there as well? Uh, yes, yeah. there are some terrain pieces in here as well. So we've got Covenant Scenery Box. Mm -hmm. 
And I believe that's all the, the little shields and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so the UNSC the, box. Done, yeah, they've done two uh, packs for both of the factions here. So you've got all the um, the gun shields and things like that. So you could set up uh, machine guns behind them, and you obviously got the energy shields for the Covenant there as well. Yeah. Uh, additionally, there's actually some pieces in there which would be really good for objective games and stuff. So you've got like generators and and, and things, so you mm -hmm. could focus in on particular parts of the battlefield. Yeah. yeah. Cool stuff. Uh, Very cool uh, stuff. What a, it, it's a the game is just looks cracking. I'm I'm just really looking forward to get the opportunity to play it at some point. Mm. Right next up, we have um, uh, Ar Ar Aravan. Aravan. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, a leak that sort of came out uh, a couple of weeks ago when we talked about the new car and the betrayer and things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, people have taken them all now and they've put it together. So we've now actually been able to see a proper look at what Araman is going to look like when the the new supposed box set comes out. Yeah. Um, the whispers on the the internet and things like that have been that we're working towards a, a sort of bur Prospero burns, a burning of Prospero style set, yeah. which will be a little bit like Betrayal of Cal. Uh, mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see where this one goes. I think. Yeah. It's a it's a good looking mini, I've got to say. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the other big things about this as well is that this, this is actually quite an interesting um, sort of period in the Horus Heresy as well, because when it comes to what was going on in Kalth, there were two sides that were clearly on one side or the other. Yeah. Whereas in this one, to begin with, the the uh, the um, the Thousand Suns weren't really turning to anybody. They were okay, but there was all the whispers and things like that that had gone in the background, and the Space Wolves were sent there to kill them and stuff like that. So there were all these machinations going on. So it be really interesting to see how this sort of unfolds uh, scenario-wise if we actually get a good box for this. Yeah. Additionally as well, um, this will be the what if this is the case, we're going to get a proper character in this box as well. Mm. Because obviously in the Betrayal in the Kalth one, it was very much a sort of blank page. As it it was, were. yeah. Mm. So this one will be uh, a lot more character focused, which will be really interesting. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, like Betrayal at Kalth, it was much more of an open war zone where it was just multiple chapters fighting against each other. Whereas, yeah. you know, Prospero Burns, I've read the book, so I, I do know a little bit about it. Mm. Araman and the rest of the Thousand Sons were fine but the problem was at the beginning of the great crusade their gene seed was incredibly unstable so mm. you know they were mutating and all horrible sort of things happening until their primarch magnus the red actually went and fixed it yeah like he fixed it as in there was some shenanigans in the background so <laughs> during the books each of the actual thousand sons sort of had this this spirit looking over their shoulder mm -hmm. you know guiding their psychic force yeah it wasn't a spirit you know well, there, there was some dark demony things going on there. Oh. So whenever the Space Wolves were actually tricked into attacking Prospero by Horus, because mm -hmm. they were sent by Horus before they knew he had turned, yep. and they went and, you know, look, you've, you've broken the, the treaty here, you know, because there was a big council which actually banned psychic powers. Mm -hmm. Thousand Sons kept doing it, obviously, because, you know... Well, that was their uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It, it was the whole thing of their Primarch, of him, look, I, I, I know what's going on here. I, I, I know what's going wrong. I have to warn my dad. You know, mm -hmm. so he actually projects himself out into the warp onto Terra, where the Emperor is working on what I can only assume is essentially a human version of the Webways, mm -hmm. and destroys it. So the Golden Throne. Who destroyed it? Magnus. Right. Magnus the Red. Him projecting himself to Terra to actually warn the Emperor of Horus's betrayal. Destroyed yeah. what uh, what the Emperor was making. Yes, which was essentially a human version of the Webways. Which would have meant that they could have travelled without having to touch the warp. Exactly, yep. and that was where the Golden Throne came in, because mm -hmm. it was going to be using either Magnus or the Emperor sitting on it, actually channeling their psychic power into it to create this Webway and maintain mm -hmm. it for everybody. Yeah. You know, which is what made Magnus turn, because he, he was shown a vision of himself being strapped down to the throne and being forced to sit there for eternity, mm -hmm. you know. So that's how that all happened. Makes absolutely no sense to me. No, it does. It <laughs> makes perfect sense. He done good. Yeah. It, it makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah. Um, so are we expecting a box game then? Are we any rumblings on on a potential box game or? That seems to be the the way things are going, especially since this is actually a plastic model. So people are just looking towards this and thinking that we're going to see another box game from Games Workshop, mm. focusing in on growing that Horus Heresy range. Mm. Um, they've already started doing it with by releasing a lot of the Horus Heresy stuff from Betrayal at Kalth mm. in their separate plastic box sets and things. So it'll yeah. be interesting to see where this one goes. Nice. Yeah, awesome. Nice. Yeah. Um, okay, Icarus Miniatures. Uh, we've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a preview of, of something they're going to be taking to Kickstarter. Yeah. Yeah, so Icarus Miniatures had been on Kickstarter before, and it was one of those projects that was sort of going well and things, but they wanted to go try and go back to the drawing board. So they've done that with the Icarus project now, and it's going to be releasing on Kickstarter again next week mm -hmm. on Friday. So this is then coming back with their two main factions for the game, which are the Alliance and the Nexus. Mm -hmm. uh, Lloyd absolutely loves the Nexus, and I can see why they're 
um, amazing aliens, really yeah. fantastic looking. Mm. So they're going to be bringing out these two faction box sets, keeping it very simple, get the rules out there as well, which you can actually go and download now, mm. and just getting this uh, skirmish sci-fi game onto the tabletop and getting out to people's tables. Yeah, yeah the Naxes are very John Carter of Mars looking, aren't they, Warren? Mm. You know, but yeah, I also yeah. love the, the look of the Alliance starter set, that real mm. old West sort of feel to them. Mm -hmm. Very, yeah. very cool. Is there anything yeah. else in this? Uh, yeah, there's some painted minis here. Yeah, so cool. they showed off some of the uh, the some of the previews for what they're going to have inside the different sets and things like that. So you've got the Alliance Scout, and then you've got a couple of the different Nexus creatures there oh. as well. One of the things that I really like about this sort of stuff that they've been doing is it's very dynamic and it looks like it's purpose for the battlefield effectively yes. mm, especially when yeah. it comes to the nexus so you're actually seeing them attacking things or getting lining up a shot and things so mm. yeah cool. uh, i've got to say i'm a, i'm really liking what i'm seeing here mm. i also like the fact that they have dinosaur feet dinosaur? You, yes. yeah go back to that second one and uh, you will absolutely see dinosaur feet yep that's that's some dinosaur <laughs> feet right there you know and it, we know that they're dinosaur feet because mm -hmm. um a lady just found a, a pristine set of dinosaur tracks on a beach down in Australia. Mm. So he did. So it was I, a, I was thinking yeah. petrified in rock or something. Well, I don't know if they were afraid at the time. You know, they, they were, <laughs> there was. Well, I, I, I hardly <laughs> think she was just wandering along and find them sitting in the sand where the tide line had never uh, hit. You, you, uh, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure petrified is the right word. We'll have to put it out to the Fossilized community. Fossilized then. I think I think dung petrifies. Um, I'm, I'm sure. I think it, it, it fossilized, so it's. Um, okay. but, but basically, yes, they found these, you'll be, these uh, dinosaur tracks. Mm. You'll be, you'll be uh, looking out for some of the rest of the stuff that the Nexus is doing then, because they've actually got some of these guys on big Harley Davidson bikes with big melee weapons and stuff. So you'll have dino type aliens riding bikes. Dino bikers. Well. Dino bikers. <laughs> dino bikers from hell. Right. Um, uh, f finally, we've got some. We've got some artwork or something, Ben. Yeah, so this is the uh, next big project from Eric Lang, which is going to be called Rising Sun. And it's a little bit of a sort of follow-on, a sister game, effectively, to Blood Raid, which everybody yes. went crazy for. And the artwork was by Adrian Smith, and he's back again working on this project uh, with, with him again. Mm -hmm. um, and so they've been showing us some of the artwork for it, the kind of miniatures you're going to be seeing. Uh, so you will see here some of the um, the artwork for both the Lotus and the Bonsai factions, yeah. uh, which are going to be in the game. So you've got the different leaders and stuff like that. And they always tend to do this thing where they have two types of uh, basic troop, effectively, mm -hmm. so that you're not going to see the same thing on the tabletop all the time, sort of elevating yeah. the board game to that next level, which is what, what a lot of these things from Core Mini are not going to be doing. Mm. Um, you'll also see the artwork there for the Oni towards the bottom of the page, which is going to be one of the... Or effectively rewards you'll be getting when you play the game. Oh, um, oh. If anybody's played uh, Diplomacy, which is a very old game now, very good board game, mm -hmm. uh, the game's going to be drawing a lot from that. So if you like Diplomacy, mm -hmm. and if you like Blood Rage, and everybody likes Eric Lang, uh, this might be one to check out uh, sort of the start of 2017 where he's going to be looking at um, uh, putting this onto Kickstarter and stuff. So. Yeah, cool. Also this week, we had the new White Dwarf. Now, let me get this right. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is important that we, that we nail this. Mm -hmm. It's the relaunch of White Dwarf, right? which is like the old White Dwarf that was there before the previous relaunch of White Dwarf. So it's, but it goes back even further than that. It's so like it's, the it's, old it's, White Dwarf before the White Dwarf, which was the White <laughs> Dwarf before the relaunch of White Dwarf, which then ended up stopping, which has now led to this re-release relaunch of White Dwarf, which is like the much older White Dwarf, but not... Like the very old white dwarf, and not right. right ben. So, so hang on, so hang on. It's the yeah. new old, new new old, old new 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 old new. There's yeah. a, there's a new new in there somewhere. That's for sure. <laughs> um, anyway, I didn't manage to get a copy. Oh. Um, I looked all over. I went around all of our stores, and the only one place that had it um, only got two copies. Yeah. And uh, I I didn't get one. Was that I, I was, was that the new news agent up in the diamond? Yeah. Uh, no. No. No, one? they didn't have it. Really? They didn't have it. <laughs> you know, on, on why why you're going to the hassle of, of starting to name our news agents to people who have never even been here or never going to likely to be here. I, I wonder you where you're to, checking. You know, do, okay, right. Anyway, we couldn't get one. However, <laughs> Ben did. So Ben's going to take us, take us through his impressions of it then. Yeah, so I managed to get a sneaky sort of copy of it towards the end of last week on my week off, which is very cool. Uh, and yeah, I've been sort of diving through this and reading through all the different articles and things like that. It's a pretty hefty tome, actually, when you pick it up. Really nice uh, yeah. look to it and everything like that. Um, one of the big sort of key things that I think is really good about this is that it's actually got content to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. As in, it's not just a whole bunch of images and, you know, like 
selling stuff effectively. Although there are, there are pages to do with that, but they're actually talking about things in depth and stuff like that. So, I mean, one of the big things was they've actually. So it's a little. About, it's a bit a bit of the antithesis of um, Warhammer Visions. Yes. Uh, while yeah, Visions was yeah. a nice uh, a nice a nice product in its own mm. right, it was yeah. it kind of felt I think it kind of felt a little bit strange. Yeah. Coming coming yeah. from White Dwarf, when White Dwarf was more about its its meaty content mm. rather than rather than the vision stuff itself. Yeah, I so. mean that's definitely the case with this stuff because they've really gone into detail with this, a lot of the things that have been coming out recently. So one of the big things they looked at was um, the release of Death Watch, and they've talked a lot about exactly what's in the box for that and the scenario behind it and the thinking. I mean, there's a huge bit of it in the in the what in the magazine where they're talking about the artwork for death watch and things like that yeah uh, one of the other big things they've done is they've actually looked back towards more of the designer stuff so in old white doors they used to talk a little bit about why they've made certain model kits and things yeah and so they they obviously showed off a little bit to do with the new white dwarf but they've also dwelled on the the kernoth hunters as well for the wood elves and mm -hmm. they've delved into that side of things um one of the big things that i think was a fantastic return to form for this actually was that they've really focused in on the sort of almost social and personal aspect of White Dwarf and what it used to be, yeah. where you kind of knew the characters in the in behind the scenes and stuff. Yeah. So, like, they've done a, um, a, a Tale of Four Gamers, which has been really fun it's to read lovely through. to see that make its return, the Tale of Four Gamers, because yeah. so many of us grew up um, just glued to that part of White Dwarf because it was always great to see the progression and, and some some incredible armies uh, mm, came yes. out of that. Like uh, Andy Chambers uh, uh, did a, an amazing one, as did Paul Sawyer. Yeah, they, they, yeah. They, they did armies that, you know, I think it was, uh, they've done armies that people are still talking about today, mm. you know, because they, they, they were just, they were just fabulous. For me, it was yeah. always the battle report, seeing those, those epic tables that you would always, you know, yes. oh, I want to play on that. You know, mm -hmm. give you that real aspirational feel to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I mean, it's one of the things they definitely come back to in this um, in this version of White Dwarf, in that they've actually looked at battle reports and sort of supplementary bits that you can use for yourself as well. But I mean, the big thing for the battle reports is that they're actually, you know, sixteen, seventeen pages long, something like that. They've got really oh, nice so they've detail. Got photos. Really meaty, then, yeah. Yeah, really diving into the detail of what's going on. They've got some very nice cinematic shots going on with it as well, which is always good to see. Uh, I mean, this one was all about sort of Age of Sigmar. It was sort of a more sort of take what you want style game. So yeah. they're looking back at the older version of, of Age of Sigmar, effectively. But it was just, it was telling out a really nice narrative story. And I mean, that's one of the things that I really liked about the old battle reports is that they had something to them, a bit of meat and stuff. And it, it like they've got some really good bits and pieces in there from the commanders as they're playing as well, which is something that everybody really liked to see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the other big things that they've been looking at as well is that um, there used to be. Um, uh, the Blanchitsu stuff that came out in a couple mm -hmm. of the White Dwarfs and stuff, and they've returned to that. Um, so we're looking at some of his artwork that he's been doing, obviously over you know decades now, but also some of his models and conversion work as well. So yeah. it's really nice to see them actually again continuing this personal feel to things and sort of looking at it from a sort of this is what hobbyists and collectors want from their magazine and from Games mm -hmm. Workshop, and it's really nice to see that return. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, overall, Ben, pleased with the pleased with what you got yeah yeah it was really good i mean obviously getting an 18 pound model on the front of it's always a plus i guess but yeah. um, the actual magazine itself was really good content and as i've sort of said to a lot of people as well it's become sort of my toilet break magazine so if, if ah, a magazine can get to that level too of much information. you know I'll, I'll take that to too the much moon. information absolutely <laughs> that's what we're all doing it's what we're all doing so yeah. does it set pride of place in the little magazine rack beside the loo roll because remember you know we have to we have to think back my, both my grandmothers mm. had magazine racks in the toilet it's what you yeah, do. But it's what you do. People, people don't really do that these days. Well, yeah. they should. They no, should. Cause, <laughs> no, because these days, if you have your phone or you have your tablet, uh -huh. you know, if if you're on the loo with your phone or your tablet, you'll be about ten minutes. If you have Wi-Fi access, you're going to be an hour. Yes. If you have Wi-Fi well, access and a charger, you're never leaving. <laughs> Well, that's that's to that's to show the 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 strength of this magazine. Then that I didn't even need to take my phone with me. Yeah, I could take the white dwarf in and read that. So yeah, it's mm. it's a good product, and I recommend picking it up. The uh, next issue looks like it's going to be very good as well. So yeah. it's, uh, I think there's a comic with the next one, which is very oh, cool. fantastic. Very cool. It's a it's a very welcome return to form. 
mm. um, from the crew, uh, the crew behind White Dwarf. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to someday finding <laughs> a copy um, and uh, actually getting a chance to, to sit down and, and have a, a browse through it. Yeah. I have a warm toilet seat somewhere where I can go and rest <laughs> <Good>. myself. <laughs> right. Right. Justin, yes, you've got an interview coming up and a massive prize. Yeah, I was joined by Jay and Don from TT Combat who were over to talk about the latest and greatest that's happening for Carnivale now that they've got their hands on the IP. So wow. we'll take a quick hub break and then we'll be right back. Humanity has been driven from Earth, but now it's time to take it back. Join the Reconquest and fight the Scourge on the Drop Zone Commander Hub at BeastsOfWar.com. Flames of War brings you the battles of World War II in epic 15mm scale. Go to the hub on beastsofwar.com to find news, tactics and tutorials about the game. Hi everybody, I'm joined by the guys from TT Combat. This is Jay and Dan and they've come across to talk about Carnivale. Indeed, so what, we have. What's happening? So, we've recently taken over um, the Carnivale stuff from Vespron Games yep. and we are going to be re-releasing everything that they had done Mm -hmm. as Carnivale Classics. So within the next couple of weeks we hope to get all of the original Carnivale miniatures out and ready um, so that everyone can continue buying them again yep. so that the game doesn't kind of slow down. Mm -hmm. uh, that, with that in mind as well, we're also in the process of redesigning all of the miniatures to give a much darker twist to them. Mm -hmm. um, we're making a lot more malice and a lot, yeah. a lot more dark. So reading through the original kind of um, information that um, David had come up with it was a very dark world, mm. and we thought that the imagery needed to represent become darker that, yeah. to represent that. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, like for for people that don't know, uh, we actually did a Carnival Week years ago to actually give people a, a flavour of the world. So uh, you can go and check that out if you want to find out a little bit more about it if you've been living under a rock and don't know it. But I am very very happy to actually see this get picked up again because whenever Vesperon did decide, look, we're going to discontinue. I was a little bit heartbroken because it, it was one of those games that just it really jumped out at you as being something so flavorful Massive and potential. Just so cool. That's the thing. As, as soon as we looked into it, it was like we were reading through. And it's like this game has so much potential. Yeah. We love all of the ideas in this. It's like we we need to keep this going, and mm -hmm. we want we want to make it into a really big game. We want to get loads of people playing it. We want mm -hmm. stores to support it. Um, when we got the opportunity to acquire it, we 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 bit his hand yeah, off. Yeah, you jumped on it. Yeah, we were yeah, immediately definitely. like, we need this, and yeah. Yeah, we've got it, and now we've started working on it. Well, um, that that it's great news for everybody that loves the Carnival because there was a fan base out there, and, and there was just there was a nice core of them that just loved living and playing within the world. You yeah, know? yeah. And I am seeing here on the table, you guys have actually started to design up some buildings for. Yeah. It. So over the past couple of weeks, I've been prototyping and coming up with uh, different buildings mm. for. The range because um, we'd like a range ready to go when the game's ready to go yeah so there's stuff the, already there the uh, idea it's, it's one of those things for the style of game that carnival is you want a nice dense table yes. yeah. you're running over rooftops jumping canals balconies yeah, exactly. everywhere this that, the other. you yeah. you want so much stuff packed in mm -hmm. um and you've got so many like levels fighting and the, the whole kind of dynamic of it is like I'm going to run across this wall, jump up there, I'm going to leap down against your, your yeah, guy. Yeah, I'm going to jump between this building and this building while midair I'm going to shoot you in the face. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, it's so, a good time to can. Exactly. You know, well, I mean, like, let's, let's have a quick look at some of the stuff we have on the table here. Yep. So what is this? Uh, so that's one of the simple buildings. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the ones I've got here are very generic in terms of their structure, mm -hmm. um, but they all have different kind of stylings. Yeah. Um, the idea is that you'll be able to mix and match all of these different levels. So mm -hmm. the base building comes as, um, you'll be the, like the bottom two floors with this style of roof. Yeah. And then you've got extensions, so it's just an additional floor. You've mm -hmm. got roof, different roofs you can choose from, yeah. balcony levels. So it's become, so going to become a really nice modular system. Yeah. Yes. Like, uh, there's one and there sitting at the front, if you pass it to me. This yeah. looks like you know, a, little, a little street vendor's place. Yeah, so just, along really with cool the modular looking. buildings, mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of unique buildings as well. Mm -hmm. So I've got the store, there's townhouses, there's going to be a tower as well. Yeah. Um, and, oh, actually. Is this ah this pops yep. out? Is that meant to? Yeah. So to the principle out? is that um, the current modular buildings I've got, their design will be altering to mm. the same as the store. In that one of the walls on the level will be able to come away nice and easy. The other ah. ones are interlocked, so it gives that s a support. See, and, ah, this one comes too. And those ones uh, come away nice and easy, so right. you don't have to take floors off and roofs off mm. for 
battles inside because the there could be an occasion. More, a lot more accessible I, then. You have I people on both like floors. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got a few other pieces sitting here as well. So if you want to pass them across to me. Yeah, so if I just slide so, these ones. So, we move this out of the way. What are we looking at here? So, these base plates are mm -hmm. what's going to be making up the board. Um, yeah. We've opted to go for, initially it's a three foot by three foot board mm -hmm. made up of four inch squares. These uh, sections are classed as four squares. Right. Um, and we're going to be doing them in different sets. So you're going to have one which is just a singular square. Uh -huh. You've got one which is a double one, so it's a nice long thin one. Yeah. You've got this four one, and then you've got a big plaza one, which will be that size. Right. So it's again, it's a really nice modular system where you're going to be able to start, you know, building in yeah. all of your buildings and actually start to really customize the way stuff. Set you can have it set up in any way you want, and yeah. all of the bridges as well. They yeah. span the four inch gap, so the idea is that all of the canals are uh, four inches across, so a single square. Yeah. So you can have it in any way, any setup you want, and mm. it's still all usable. This is a really, really cool idea. It's, it's one of those things that people always wonder about with Carnival was, how do I do canals? Mm. I, I've yeah. never had to do canals before, how do I do them? Yeah. The fact that you have something like this that you can just, you know, get a nice layer of water effect down on the base table and then yeah. start building this on. Yeah. Or even literally just a blue sheet. It's really yeah. simple. You yeah. can just throw it down. Um, water effect's obviously going to look a lot better, mm. but I mean, for those of you that aren't into your scenery building, you can just yeah. chuck a blue sheet down. Well, I mean, like uh, a while back, Warren did a, an ocean table, so it was a big 8 by 4 table. Yeah. So, I mean, like if you had something like that and we're just starting to lay these pieces out on top yeah. of it, you would very quickly get that that nice Venetian feeling. It would look amazing, yeah. 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 It would look yeah, great. I've, I'm um, going to have to try some of this on there and just get a look at it. <laughs> yeah. But so the initial principle with this board setup mm -hmm. is that we're going to create a standardised board, which will be the one we display at Salute next year. Mm -hmm. But it will also be the one that we sell to shops. So basically they'll be able to buy this set, which makes up a board, mm -hmm. and it will come with a like a, a map sheet of a yeah. section. So it is a generic sections that can play tournaments and stuff on it yep um so it's giving like canal access on each of the levels as mm -hmm. uh, we're giving a percentage of water that you have to have and a percentage yep. of land you have to have yeah yep. um just so that is fair to all sides because if you're the rashar for instance oh yeah yeah you the, canal, the canals the can be your best yeah. friend yeah. i mean yeah. like I, i've seen those things just this is it through the water grab me from the side of a canal and drag me down to a water agree yes yeah yeah we've, in in the play testing that we've done is mm. that's happened quite often it's yeah. it's quite a cool dynamic to have in there Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, like uh, speaking of the Rashar, I'm, I'm seeing that you've sent along some artwork here, so I'm, I'm yeah. going to start cycling through some of it. Okay, so, yeah. we've had our artists going through redesigning uh, the existing ones. We've started with the Rashar and the Guild as the two factions. All right. Well, uh, with. Let, let, let's get stuck straight in. So, what's the first thing? Oh, oh hello. Yes. <laughs> so, oh, uh, War Warren is going to be so unhappy that he's not here right yeah. now. <laughs> that is a mighty land shark. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's the the Kakros Rashar, which is yeah the land shark. Mm. Um, it's and a personal favour of mine. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's one of the first ones we actually had designed up, um, mm. so we could get a, a good. Yeah. Grasp of this is where we're going with Carnival. Yeah. It, it just looks so grisly. Mm. You yeah. know, you can imagine this thing stalking the alleyways of Venice, just yeah. waiting for some some hapless person to wander just by. Wander along and the big grey hand reaches out, grabs him by the scruff of the neck. Come here, sudden, you. There's your blood lunch. I can't everywhere. tell you how many times when I gave the artist the briefing for this, how many times I wrote terrifying. Yes, <laughs> it had yeah. to be terrifying, and, and I think it, he's done a great job. Yeah. Uh, do you remember who the artist is for these? Um, uh, Matthias. Matthias. Uh, Beliski, I yes. believe. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, another one of the Rashar, I believe. Yeah, this is the new Magi Rashar. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of their their leader, as mm -hmm. it were. So he's got all of this uh, horrific magic mm -hmm. um, and wanders around with his signature trident. Yeah, so he's going to be one of the guys that's hanging around in the sunken areas of Venice, mm -hmm. actually preaching to the, you know, the locals that... Come, come, we can give you a better life. Yeah, he's but, By the way, you one. may end up with a tentacle or two, but that, that, that's, yeah. that's in the final. Or, or a thing, like. <laughs> just, just, just sign right here. There we go. <laughs> uh, honestly, this it's got that really nice aquatic feel to it, mm. but what it has more of is that sinister mind behind it. You know? Yeah. Because yeah, the original design, it was a little bit, you know, the faceless monster. This has a little bit more of I am the super villain of this world yeah. sort of feel to it. So yeah. you've what done a really fantastic aspect. job with that. Uh, next up, we have one of the big dudes. Yes. Um, so who do we have? I um, uh, can't remember his exact name now. Is it the Vrugduru Rashar? Or something along Vrugduru is the little guys. It's ah. 
the other one, which his name escapes me, but Magdalene? he is the real big mm. guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, or is it one of the, the Black Rishar? I'm, I'm trying to remember names. It's that long yeah, since I've um, actually dropped into this world. The Rashar ones are tricky to remember. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's got a really, really sort of deep one feel to it now. Yeah. You know, and it's... We didn't actually want to change it all that much. We really liked the original model for this mm, one. We just wanted to... Just wanted it tie in with what we had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, like, the switch up in art style, I feel, is really, really working. People mm. are going to be looking at this going, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I get the horror aspect. I get yeah. the fact that these are deep, dark monsters of an unknowable purpose that are yeah. just wanting to, well, do unknowable things. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, next up, who do we have? So this is the Guru Rishar, this is the, the, the standard mm -hmm. uh, normal troops. Um, so they are the, the, the generic guys that mm -hmm. go along. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm liking what you've done with this because it's, you sort of brought it back from what it was. Because what it was before, it was the, the big hulking sort of fish guy with the big massive yeah. head. Yeah. You know, so this brings it m more back towards sort of a humanoid monster. It kind of looked like it belonged in Scooby-Doo or something. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Scooby-Doo did pop into my head. Yeah. But, you know, this, it's, it's got that more of a human-esque feel to it, and it's got These are the kind of things, you, you're walking along, it's a normal-looking person, and all of a sudden, you're, you're actually faced with this yeah. terrifying creature instead of some random person on yeah. the street. You know what it's about, mm. literally, yeah. straight yeah. away. Like, I actually like, really like the way you've sort of designed the feet as if it was, like, gills which had just grown around the foot to actually help them swim in the water. Yeah. yeah. Really, really nice. Yeah. It's little details like that that people look at it and go, oh, yeah, that's what that was that be for. Well, the thing swims, and it drags things, things into the water, so it needs to be able to do both. It needs to be able to be, it's you know, aquatic, yeah. and it needs to be able to function on land. And, yeah, yeah. And again, it's been put across very nicely. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just so nice, so dark. I love yeah. the way this the direction you're going with this. Okay, on to my faction. So this is I, the guild. I've been a guild player since day one. So this is the black lamp, uh, mm -hmm. with his magical uh, magic nullifying lamp stolen from the doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it just goes with the whole dark aspect that we're wanting to go with. Um, you don't want to end up on his naughty list. Yeah. yeah. You really don't. <laughs> well, again, whenever you're looking at this guy and imagining the story around him, you can imagine him sitting in a tavern in Venice, just listening to the gossip yeah. around the city, just waiting to hear something's going on in this district and yeah. just going, right. And then he's gone. Now he's going to go to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, all the people in the tavern look over and he was there. He's now gone. Yes, yes. The, the, the bar wench t turns up with his next pint and just goes, you didn't even tip me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay, next up. Gondolier. Mm. Uh, so um, the gondoliers are going to play quite an important role in it, like moving around the city. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the whole dark aspect. Beforehand, the normal gondolier was just a gondolier. It's, it's just your, your water tax. This guy, he rides the canals of Venice with these horrific creatures in it. So he's scarred up. He's got this ore, which has been uh, used as a weapon as well with all of his... Um, this guy's got uh, to survive in yeah, this place. Yeah, but it's, it's that, that functional modification to yeah. something that he uses his tool in everyday life is yeah. suddenly, uh, needs... nope, nope, get back. Yeah. Not, not in something's, my gondola. Something's coming out of the water. Smack you. It needs yeah. to be sharp. Quick, I'm going yeah. to make this sharp. Yeah. Yeah. Sharp and heavy and if all else fails, use it as a club. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> very, very nice. Uh, next up, we have one of my, my favourite characters. Uh, who do we have here? So this is the Capodesum. So the, again, the leader of the guild. Mm -hmm. um, well, not the leader of the guild, so the, one of the main characters. So in the guild start sets, he's the, the, the boss, mm -hmm. um, like decent assassin yeah. uh, fighter. Um, and just going around ruining people's days, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, like it, in the original game, it it really had that that feel of a Assassin's Creed. Now, it yeah. actually was designed before Assassin's Creed came out. I'm not exactly yeah. sure if you guys talked to David and knew that, but no. he had actually came up with the design before Assassin's Creed came out, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah. And then when Assassin's Creed came out, or he hadn't known about it or something, he looked at it and went, "Oh, That's okay." Weird. Yeah, that's very familiar. <laughs> yeah, but the, the the assassin aspect, especially with the the Capodesum's kind of rules mm. and stuff like that, he just kind of appears out of nowhere, and mm. suddenly you're you're trying to face him off. Is yeah. um, well, it's, it's, well, it's again, it's, it's another one of those beautiful cinematic moments of you know, it's a quiet night in Venice. A, a woman's shriek pierces the air, and on the rooftop, you see him and his buddies just yeah. stepping forward and looking down, going. Wow. Something's wrong here. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you picked the uh, wrong night. <laughs> yes, you picked wrong the wrong night. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, next up. We have this guy. Yeah, so it's the Guild Barber. Yes. Um, and we just wanted to put across that kind of sinister, kind of crazy aspect to him mm. as well. So he's a little bit nutty going out into the streets with mm. just his barber's knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and That's all he needs. Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of got that, that sort of Sweeney Todd feel to him. Yeah, yeah you know, exactly. Exactly. 
It's just him, you know, he'll walk up to one of the, the patricians, smiling, going, ah, good evening, my sir, you, you look as if you could use a shave, snick. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. Yeah, just and it'll be that quick. To the next target. <laughs> yes. Uh, again, fantastic. I love that it's got a, a real world feel to it now, yeah. but also yeah. a, a comic book styling that just really jumps out at you, so it's, yeah. it's very cool that way. Next up. Uh, Pulishina, I believe, is the way you say it. So these guys are actually just crazy. Yeah, Punchinella Artan, is actually the pronunciation. Punchinella, that's the one. Yeah. Um, so we've, we've got the, the king for a day mm. concepts being done at the moment. Yeah. Uh, but this is the standard guy. Um, and we just wanted to emphasize that ju it's just chaos with them. Yeah. They do absolutely whatever they want, whenever yeah. they want. They do have a lot of character. Game. It's yeah, obviously yeah. Well, it's yeah. a reeking character there. In, in the original rule set, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are tweaking the rules much, but in the original rule set, these guys were absolute filth when you put a ton of them on the yeah. table. You know, they were just madcap, dashing around, clubbing everybody in sight. Yeah. You know, and yeah. They were just that nigh on unstoppable sometimes yeah. once they got going. Uh, I assume this is another one from the starter set now, yes? So the, this is one from the Cult of Dagon. Ah, okay. Um, so it's the one of the alternate Rashar, so it's the more human of Rashar. Mm -hmm. This is the slave. Ah, I see. Um, and we wanted to go for a really nasty approach with it. So you've got the fish hooks, you've got brands and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, so they they, they know day. their property, the, yeah. and that's what it is. Yeah, well, you see, looking at this, it, it sort of feels as if it's someone who's been captured and enslaved yeah. and turned to it. You know, so you, you can imagine what they went through to actually get to this stage of yeah. actually being let back out onto the streets again. The, the things yeah. they've had to deal with. Yeah, and the things they've had to see. Yeah. 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 Uh, next up, we have, I believe this is the Butcher. Yes. Oh, come on. Is he there? <laughs> there, there he is. <laughs> One of the yeah. most fantastic pieces of art I've seen in this so far. It's it's just it emphasizes what we want with him because mm. we just felt the original one wasn't big enough, wasn't yeah. flat. He this wasn't big. He's a brute, and yeah. that's what you when you think of a fantasy butcher, that's what that's, you kind of picture. Exactly the, the guy who's see. going to wrestle a full cow yeah. on his shoulder and put it into a shop to carve off exactly, that, yeah. you know, big, strong, and just battering everything down. Yeah. One question: Is he carrying a ribeye? He is yes. indeed. That's the correct stake to be carrying around with you. You never know yeah. when you're going to get hungry. So, bit, Or if you need to just feed a Rashara snack. Here, here, go get it, go get <laughs> yeah, it. Go I'm get away, it. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, he this is carrying Just them closer and thunk. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so is this one of the priests of Dagon? Yeah, so this is the, the priest of the cult. Mm. Um, he, he's the, the main guy. Uh, and again, we just wanted to get that lunacy aspect mm. across. That. Yeah, I love how dramatic a mm. lot of the poses are. And, yeah, well, I mean, like for for this one in particular, compared to the original one, there was sort of a uh, a Jesuit feel to the sort of the robes and yeah. stuff. This this feels a lot more flamboyant. Yes, if that makes sense, and it's it's got that feel of it's its own culture that it's coming from. It's not lifted it's, from another yeah, culture. Yeah, it's more that aspect. It is this random cult, and yeah. as with most cults and stuff like that, they have that ostentatious. They have their mm. own stuff, and they yeah, but it, they stand it, they, out. They work up their own sort of rituals and styles. Yeah. is what I'm saying as well. Yeah. And this yes. this feels like a very original sort of style it's their to own, it. Their own yeah. thing. You yeah. know, so it's it's something that has grown and evolved in its own time. Uh, next up. We have da -da -da. so it's his his seconds the officiants um, mm. so again more lesser priests of the yep. cult um, similar again and you, you can see that the design trends following across between them yeah so that you know are the, these point, are yeah. the yes. same group yes these are the, the, the hooded ones the yeah. the unknown masters but not the guys at the top these are sort of the public face yes yeah. they're they're <laughs> the ones that everyone kind of just avoids in the street it's like i know he's bad but i can't remember why he's bad <laughs> yeah or if they're at one of the the cult's services you can imagine him up on the altar the twin sacrificial blades yeah. ready just to just you know performing all the do all the rice. Yeah, do yes, the all the, the, <laughs> yeah. the necessaries. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, next up, who do we have? Hello. Oh, so that's nice. This is Gil. This is one of the naggers. So it's the male prostitutes uh, masquerading as the female prostitutes. <laughs> ah. Yeah, so I have it's noticed. An, it's an interesting one. <laughs> well, you did um, notice was, was the kitten there, right? The kitten. I, I noticed the, the kitten, the cat mask, the beautiful dress, and then it was just like, wait, look closer. Why has it got a hairy chest? Yeah. So we went from the and when we, when we initially looked at it, it was like, okay, that's interesting. Mm. Did some research into it. So it's the the cat mask is that prominent thing, and it's what they did. It's what the Venetians did. Yeah. And at that time the whole kind of male prostitution was he illegal mm. and that they'd be burnt and hung for it. Yes. Unless if they were wearing a mask. 
because if you're wearing a mask, you can't be arrested <laughs> because Venice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you take on the persona of the mask, uh, so it's not you. Yeah. Um, so they, they, they would wear these masks mm. and taunt it because p- prostitution was incredibly profitable at that time. They yeah. found a loophole. Yeah, 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 yeah. they found a loophole. <laughs> uh, th- th- trust me, in any culture, they, if there are lo- in any culture for any law, if there are loopholes, people will find it. The thing yeah. is, these guys were so popular mm. that the actual prostitutes went to the church <laughs> complaining that they had a lack of business. <laughs> <laughs> so they enforced the law that they could uh, expose themselves on bridges and uh, balconies to show what people were doing. <laughs> <laughs> they went to the church, <laughs> of all people. But there we go. So job maybe done. one of yeah. them knew a particular yeah. you know, person yeah. within the church who was a little sympathetic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the variety of humanity in the world mm. is glorious yeah. in our world and in this world you're carrying it across. So it, yeah. it makes a lot of you sense. Yeah. Everywhere. Okay, next up, uh, another beautiful piece of artwork. Yes. Have, this looks to be like a little cut purse. Yeah, it's the pilferer. Mm. Um, so we wanted to get that aspect of yeah. he might look like a kid, but. He doesn't yeah. act like a kid. He he, yeah. he's, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, you've went um, uh, again a lot more dark. At this darker. Yeah. This isn't the artful dodger we're looking at here. No, no. You know, this is a poor starving little guy who's running around with his knife, dodging knives, d- <laughs> dodging knives. <laughs> yeah, and actually just cutting purses where he can and getting anything and everything he can. Yeah, little trouble criminal. and nicking everything he can. Yeah, that's what we want. Is the miniature going to be like this, jumping over a stand? Please um, say yes. We haven't I'd decided so. yet. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we were at conflicts because obviously there's a lot of people don't like the idea of moving a base that has a box con- constantly attached to it. But then there's also the dynamics that that would bring mm. within the model. It would look amazing. I know yeah. with a lot of models as well, we're planning on doing special releases. Yeah. Ah. So we will do an alternative one. I so, see. Um, like for instance, with the King for the Day one, mm. we've got those like different concept arts, which mm. one of them is going to be a special one that we, we do release at one point, yeah. but then you've got the basic one that yeah. everyone can Can I have get. one at the beginning of the day when he's fine and one at the end of the day whenever he's yeah. been done up? <laughs> yeah, we put along those lines. Yeah. Uh, right, uh, moving swiftly along, uh, I assume this is one of the female prostitutes from the so guild. So this is the guild harlot, yep. yep. Um, and again, we just wanted to get across a realism, but also a sinister aspect. So she's mm-hmm. kind of hiding a dagger along the side there. Yeah, but it's, it's got that, that real sort of femme fatale murderous yeah, look yeah. to it, which is really well captured in this we, piece of artwork. We, with the original one, we didn't feel it got across the harlot aspect. Mm. Um, it just seemed it, like... It was a little bit too much business-like combat. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Whereas yeah. her, she's, she's got that kind of subtlety to her. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah just come over here and then yeah. Um, oh, uh, hello, Mister Priest. Hello, oh, hello, my darling. Stab in the heart. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, even our nails look really sinister. It looks quite like monstrous almost. Yeah, but in the in the the lamp lit darkness of Venice, you're not yeah, really yeah. going to notice no, it. Exactly. No. You know, it, it's one of the key things is with Carnival. It's not until you're getting up close to somebody that you you see the you horrifying. Suddenly aspects. realize yeah what you're coming up against. Yeah, it's just that moment of oh um well. I'm done. I just okay. don't think I'd leave the house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. D- depending on which of the factions you belong to, if, if you're in the guild, you're you're going out to defend your homes. Yes. You yeah. know, if you're a member of the pat- patricians, you you're going out, out to beat people up. You're going out to party and kick some ass. <laughs> exactly. If it's the Rashar, you're going out for lunch. Yeah. Let, let's be honest. And if it's the doctors of the Hospitale, <laughs> you're going out and you're want. saying, hmm, "You look like an interesting specimen, young sir. Well, please step this way. Step this way." <laughs> No, can don't make mind, don't mind the screams. That's, that's just Jeffrey. He's been here for years. <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay. Lastly, uh, who do we have here? This is another member of the guild. It's the recruiter. Ah. Um, so we've gone for a completely different aspect of what his original one was, mm. um, and just get that kind of suave um, kind of sophistication to him. Mm. So uh, he, he's still rough, but yeah. he's got that charismatic aspect to get yeah. people involved. Like, you want to come and work for us? Yeah, so you, you, you can imagine this guy again back to the tavern because yeah. it's the guild. Him just, you know, sitting in the middle of the table, regaling all those around him of his glorious yeah. stories of yeah. combat, fighting for his home, and actually inspiring them to come along and join. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's what we want. Yeah. Now we've got a couple of three D renders here as well for some of the stuff that you've been working. We on. do. So the butcher, oh, he's looking fantastic. Yeah. So that's that's the one we've got for the butcher so far. Mm. Uh, I believe this one actually got sent to us yesterday. Ooh. So things are happening quite quickly because mm. our 3D studio have come back off their um, holidays now. Uh, I see. And they're so getting cycling, to doing... cycling back up. Yeah, exactly. so we've got a load of concept art which was sent over to them and they're mm. getting through about four a week. That's not bad. Because um, yeah. they've done all the Rumble Slam stuff mm. uh, and now they're, they're able to work yeah, on the Carnival right. stuff. Yeah. For this in particular, there is one thing that jumps out at me that I love the fact that they've done. 
See on the, the actual blades, actually showing a bit of scoring on them? Mm. Yes. That is a fine, tiny little piece of detail, but it makes the miniature come to life a little bit, yeah. if you understand, because yeah, yeah. it, it feels as if he's using these weapons. It's not just a brand new shiny blade that he's just picked up off a market no, stall. They, exactly. they yeah. are working tools. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we have one more 3D render here as well for Carnivale. So this is our, our Starlet. Starlet one, yep. And yeah, that has just beautifully captured the yeah. essence of what this person would yeah. have been in that time. Yeah. Because that, that's one of the real challenges I can imagine you guys would have with Carnivale is you have to capture the flavor of the character and do it as a character people can relate to. Yeah. But you still have to have the historical aspect of it where it, it feels real, feels yeah. grounded. We, yeah. we, we want it to go down that really dark route, but not to be alien. We want it to be mm. recognizable so that you, you understand where it's going. But you, you've seen the progression from normal Venice to darker, darker, darker to suddenly this hellhole they're now in. Yeah. So, suddenly there is a big monstrous brute coming out mm. of the canal at me, ready to eat me. Exactly. Yeah. All right, uh, we have one more, and I don't believe this is for Carnivale. So what yeah. is this? So alongside um, our regular stuff, we've got a range of kind of proxy models that can be used in any other game, mm. uh, and there's a collection of fantasy miniatures. So we've got uh, the vampires here. Mm. It's the typical, we have so many ideas, they're bursting, and we just want to get them all out, and, yeah. and this is a prime example of that. Yeah, when so if we have some spare time with the studios, it's mm. like, uh, right, we don't know what to send you, here, do this. We want a vampire, yeah. make us a vampire, so, um, yeah. and, and this is what we call back. Because we've got um, an orc, um, kind of boss guy with yeah. a big axe and a witch hunter as well which yeah, has so been it's, done. It's just some nice characterful collectors minis that you can exactly. just yeah. drop into any of your forces that you think exactly. them anywhere in. or as just standalone miniatures if mm. you just like painting and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Well yeah. I mean like uh, my friend Romain from Paris in France who does our painting here uh, he's going to take one look at that, that and go oh my god the amount of work I could do on that. Mm. You know, yeah. I love the work that's been done around the sword with the, the roses coming down off the yeah. Yeah, I mean, help. They're, they're really good when like it's exactly like the, uh, the cleaver that you saw before they don't just go we made the sword that's done yeah. like, we, we, we finish with that now they go oh, how can we like add something they, they to this. It. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's adding those extra little flavor details that yeah. just really make miniatures um, like this. What we're out. so happy with is that the concept art we've got back mm. we've absolutely loved We've sent it off to get the models, and it's pretty much match for match. Mm -hmm. So we are getting exactly what the art is. Is there's yeah. not massive differences in it. Yeah. So it's like this is exactly what we want. Well, I mean, like that's that's something that's actually really special. You guys should really hold on to for mm. people who are doing design work for you. Is actually being able to take the conceptualization into reality. Yeah. Yes. I mean, like. Uh, uh, I remember I was talking to you guys earlier, you said you guys are actually still on the hunt for more people to work with you. We yeah. always need more um, designers, more mm. artists. 3D CAD artists, yeah. uh, actual illustrators, mm -hmm. uh, fluff writers. We actually want people that can write stories. Mm. Like, that's always a help because um, we've got a few different worlds that we're working on now. Yeah. All right, well, uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, in the show notes below, you guys give me a link for people to actually get through and contact you if yeah. they have those skills. So, guys... If you want to do some work on Carnivale, work with the guys at TT Combat on some you know, new fantasy worlds yeah. and stuff. Got so, so much going, things for you. Got yeah. going on. So, right. yeah. so yeah. that'll you know, maybe find somebody, get that connection going. Yes. Exactly, yeah. That'd be brilliant, yeah. Because mm. I mean, we put out um, we put out ads all the time on our, on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, and we do get a lot of people come back and we do get some real golden ones sometimes. Mm. And you know, if you're out there watching and you feel like you can add something yeah. to TT Combat, then... Yeah. Then give us a you bell. think, oh, I've got some skills, yeah. see what I can do. We well, see, it's, it's one of the things I notice about this industry, because it's such a social industry, yep. you know, it's, it's oh, I know this guy, he's my friend, he does, he does this, he does that, yeah. I've been looking for that. You know, so you don't really have that, there's sort of a disconnect between finding people with the skills and actually the person yeah, who needs exactly. those skills sometimes. Yeah. So anything we can do to actually help, you know, connect people and actually, yeah, you know, maybe fulfill the dream of someone who actually wants to work within the industry. Exactly. Okay. There's not for us. There isn't a war gaming factory that we can go to that just churns out illustrators. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, it is all done through things like this where yeah. we can we can and put out. And like the, the great artists and stuff that we have, we have just happened across them. It's like, mm. and we've got we've got them working on bits. It's like this is amazing. Mm. We've been really um, lucky with the people we've yeah. as well. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, there's one other thing you guys have brought along that you're wanting to show off, and that's some yes. of the actual cast stuff. Now, I believe yes. this is complete cast that you guys have actually are going to be packaging up and sending out. Yes, yes exactly. These yeah. are? This is the finished products for Rumble Slam. Okay, so uh, I've got a few of them here, which I'll quickly flick under close camera. So what do we have here? That so, is the Greek. That's a superstar within uh, the Rumble Slam universe. Okay. Um, and as you can see, he's cast in one piece, so there's no yep. having to put them together. Yeah, um, and he's got that, that really nice heroic pose to him. Yes, yeah. Um, um, he's awesome within the ring. Like, he's got a big kick. Um, All right, and yeah, like again, we you know the cast. We wanted to go resin because we wanted to keep that quality. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, um, and we have another one here. Who's one this? The Dark Elves. Yeah, okay. that's the Dark Elves from the Twisted Shadows. Twisted Shadows. Um, I see. So, what, so is this one of their superstars or a regular? No, I think it's just a regular one. Yeah. yeah. For one of a better way of putting it, she's a generic wrestler. Uh, <laughs> right. We put just as much love into our generic ones as we did into mm -hmm. the superstars. And then she's a two piece. So you've got this little piece of extra hair. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then you have another one which is a four piece, which is so another female she's character. One of the Deadly Diva ones. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the human females. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In some multiple parts because she has quite a dynamic pose to her. Uh, yeah. And she's well, kind see, of that's, leaping that's in the air. one of the nice things that you can do with Rumble Slam because I mean like. Uh, Earlier today, we were actually playing a game. I'm not sure if it's out or not yet. If it's not, keep an eye out for it. But it was actually seeing the gameplay of that game, seeing how dynamic it is to have a wrestler climb up to the top of the turnbuckle and yeah. do a, a flying dive bomb into yeah. somebody's face. You know, yeah. it's catching that in miniature is actually a lot, lot of fun. Yeah, and it's yes. actually a really cool thing to have because it, yeah. it helps people tell those stories. Yeah, and it's like um, you said when when you were playing. It's a case of everything. Every wrestler brings something to the table, not mm -hmm. not necessarily the same thing. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, like, uh, if I quickly show off the two forces that we we actually played yeah. with, because yeah. I've, I've got them here. So we'll go with the humans first. So we've got some of these little halfling guys here, which are really cool. And you would imagine, oh, it's only a little halfling guy. He's not going to do much. They actually are kind of tough as nails once you actually get them going. Yeah. Never underestimate the weight class one wrestlers. They're no. really, yeah. really... Uh, You then have the the regular humans. So again, you're going to expect them to be okay at this, okay at that. They do kind of do it, but I like the fact that for every weight class, you kind of have the two flavors. So you've got grapplers and you've got bruisers. The so brawlers, got, yeah. 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 Oh, brawlers, sorry. The bruisers so works. <laughs> uh, words. words. It's been a long day. But no, you've got that, that two flavor in those two classes, which actually yeah. it gives you that utility with them. Yes. And it, it changes the tactics because you're not just going to look at it and go, oh, it's uh, I've got... Two of the halflings here, they're both going to have to just run around and be annoying. No, 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 no. 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 They, they can be goddamn heroes. <laughs> yeah, and it, it kind of gives you an insight as to what they're about. So if you go, oh, my human brawler is going to do this, it's like, okay, that's his brawler. So his grappler is doing what? And mm. you can you can prepare for mm. that within the yeah. game. Yeah, and then obviously you've got some of the bigger guys. So this is an ogre. So it's still humanoid, big, massive, chunky dude. Yeah. I've, I've had this guy fly through the air. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, he, yeah it was it was it was quite glorious to actually yes. to actually was, see what's essentially an ogre climb the turnstile, bellow to the crowds. Well, we and then, um, and then we well, it was one of the things when we came up with designing this game. It was actually we toyed with the idea of it not being possible for the big guys to climb the ropes, right? Because it doesn't sit right in the head. But I'm like, well, no, it does. No, they no, don't have like, to climb the turnbuckle the whole great. way. They can just perch on the ropes. Yeah, um, well, <laughs> they, and it's, it's not even that in in wrestling. Yeah. In actual real world wrestling. I have seen some pretty big dudes get yeah. on the top yeah. of the turnstile exactly. and actually go, right, you're there. Way <laughs> Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, it was just putting forwards to the, the, the idea of Rumble Slam, which is mm. for the most part that you can do anything. There isn't anything that uh, you know, the little guy can pick up the big guy mm. and the big guy can do flamboyant attacks from the turnbuckle. Yeah, like... And the big guy can pick up the little guy and use him as live ammunition. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, goblin tossing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> which uh, happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, multiple, multiple times. Multiple. Uh, uh, right, so we then have this one, which is uh, Jester, I believe. That's the Jester. Yeah, yes. is one of your your superstar characters because you've got your yes. sort of generic frontline wrestlers, and then you've got your superstars who are really going to start to add some flavor to your your exactly. team because it is a team game, and it's it's the way the game plays is actually sort of a a team deathmatch sort of. Way yeah, place. So yeah. basically, the goal is to be the last team standing. Exactly. So you're going to be grabbing wrestlers and throwing them out of the ring, out of the ring as exactly. quickly as you can. And yeah. you want to be the last team, like there. You want to be the only mm -hmm. guys in the ring. That means you've won. So yeah. Uh, right. Let's move on to the the orc faction. So we. Why is there a blue orc? Oh wait, no, troll, troll, troll. Sorry. That's the troll. Yes, yeah. That's troll. Our troll. It's the green bruisers, and this guy stands out because he's blue. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, but every side seems to have the big guy. You know, yes, every yeah. team seems to have the medium guys, and every team seems to have the little guys. But even at that, the big guys or the regular guys for the orcs are different to the regular guys for the humans. Yes. You know, so it it does give a lot of flavor to it, and I I kind of love the way you've designed these guys running around in full leotards. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, we didn't want to lose any of that wrestling like nineteen eighties kind of feel to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We wanted to keep the color, and uh, and then you've yeah. got the goblins who are fantastically designed, and every last one of them is built. 
And I mean, absolutely oh, yeah. buffed up yeah. to the max. They yeah. they are totally hench. That was no accident. <laughs> yeah. It was a case of when we put the Bruce Fords for the artists, it was, I don't care what it is, it has to be big. Yeah. They, like, they can be a halfling, and I want arms out here. I wanted the goblin, I want it to be posed, like, you know, having a bit of fun, but it still mm. needs to have abs. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, all the things you'd expect from a wrestler. Yeah. And then we have your final character for the orc faction, who's just fantastic with such a, a cool Asian flavor to him. Yeah, Old it's all Kishi. Kishi. Yeah, or Kishi. Uh, see if you can figure that one out, guys. <laughs> I also like the fact that they're all on uh, clear acrylic bases. Did they come with this? Yes. yes. Yeah, we didn't basically because the game comes with the foam mat that you play mm. on. Um, we didn't feel like it was the kind of game where you'd want to to base your miniatures. Yeah, it doesn't kind of sit right. Mm. Um, and obviously, we've got these these really nice mats, mm. and it seemed a shame not to be able to see them. Yeah. Um, so we we decided that you know it's not that difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so we we had clear cut bases made for yeah. them. Well, like that's this is everything for a a two player game which we've actually played that will be coming out soon. Exactly. Uh, the paint job on them is actually really really cool as well, really fantastic. Uh, can you tell me who did that? Uh, we actually want to say a big thank you to Cornish Mikey for painting these up because we actually gave him these. I think it was Friday, and yeah. he had them given to us by the Monday. Um, <laughs> so like he he worked get it so done he, pretty, he pretty went, quick. You know, yeah. head down and get it done. I happen to know a few of his friends, and I I know that he cancelled all events that weekend to get these done for us. So I want to say it's a big yeah. thank you. Okay, now that that is commitment. Yeah. Big respect yeah, for that, mate. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. It meant that we could bring you coloured min miniatures, which is yeah, which, which is just the, the, well. I mean, like in the game we've played, it is fantastic. When it comes out, you guys are going to absolutely love it because I've played the game, and it's one of those games that as soon as you're finished, you want another round. You're yes. not wanting to just pack it away. You're wanting to set up and go again. It's Especially like, if you've got a decent opponent as well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, if when you've had all of those fantastic moves and scenarios, mm. the, the the goblin kicked the 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 ogre out of the the ring. It's just like. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens next. Uh, I, want I don't think that was in the one chaos. we filmed. But <laughs> no. Yeah, no, uh, we played a game off camera, and I actually had one of the halflings. Uh, I think he picked up. Uh, was Orkishi. it Or I think he rolled Orkishi out. Yeah, yeah, it was Orkishi out of the was, ring. Was was at the side of the ring, and this this little halfling just walks up and goes, "Right, you, <laughs> out you <to> go." <laughs> <laughs> out he went. Yeah, and then there's that. I mean, there's the you go. Okay, I finished the game. Let's. I want to do it again. Yeah. But there's also the. Oh, do you remember last week when we did this when we played it? And you got water that talking about it afterwards. Right, yeah, exactly. exactly. It's watercolor moments that that yeah. game creates. You yeah. know, where it's just you and your mates are standing around going, yeah, yeah. You remember whenever I got you that time yeah. with the thing in the place and the stuff. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And because you can change up so much as well, because the the, the mm. wrestlers themselves they can be modified with, mm. um, you can give them extra moves and stuff which yeah. you can add um, to the actual characters, mm. or you can just buy another team and then make your own team. So you can go, I really like the dark elves. Mm. Um, I want to have some goblins in the dark elves, and you can do that. You can make a team. It changes everything. Aye. It changes the playstyle completely. Um, for example, the gorgon, which has got a, a special ability that allows you to teleport your entire team. Now imagine that with the troll. Like yeah. The troll's on the other side of the ring, it can't move all that well, so you go, I'm yeah. going to teleport my team, I place them where I want them, and now the troll is standing in front of your superstar's face mm. with that huge fist. Yeah, yeah, yeah there, there was a very, very funny moment in the actual game where uh, Jester went at the troll. It didn't end well. It no, really didn't no, end well. No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but like being able to, to change it up by yeah. making smaller, smaller adjustments like that yeah. it makes the game fresh. Mm. All right, well, guys, thank you very much for joining us this Saturday morning. It's been Brilliant. a pleasure thank having you. Very much. Uh, very once much again, guys, us. if you want to actually get into the industry, the guys at DT Combat are having a look for, what is it? Uh, Both illustrators, yep. CAD designers, mm -hmm. sculptors, uh, fluff writers. Mm -hmm. um, Ev everyone and everything, really. Yeah, right, if you've well, got skills, come to us. Yeah. There will be a link in the description below on beastofwar.com. Click through, drop them a note. Who knows? You might actually live out your dream of working <laughs> in the industry. Hopefully. I think we'll move on to the rest of the show here. We'll yep. see you later. See you later. Cheers, guys. Anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of War Hub. Take command of elves, dwarves and orcs in this game of masked fantasy combat on BeastsOfWar.com. That looks like some seriously hard-working guys there. Yeah. So we've got a playthrough of Rumble Slam coming up. We yes? do, we do. I had a ton of fun with that game. It was absolutely glorious. It, it harked right back to my childhood of watching <laughs> the, the WWF before mm -hmm. it was WWE, seeing Hollywood Hulk Hogan coming down the runway. 
This is, this is, this is, old is, macho, uh, macho man Randy, Sal- Randy Savage. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> you see now, you know, you, now, now we're sharing memories, yeah, Justin. Yeah. Now we're sharing memories. Although he wasn't Hollywood Hulk Hogan. No, he was just Hulk Hogan. He was just Hulk Hogan. Yeah. And the uh, the the match that I remember more than any was Hulk Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior. Right. It was for the world title. Of they, they had two at the time. They had the they had the world championship and they had the intercontinental championship mm. and i think it was uh, uh the, w- i think the ultimate warrior held the intercontinental championship and hogan had the uh, had the world championship belt mm. and this was going to be a unite the belts match okay Aye. and it was the build up to this because yeah, me and lloyd were just two wee kids and we used to wrestle like mad you know every time I was the same. jumping off sofas onto each other and stuff i wouldn't yeah. do it now mind you i'd kill him <laughs> but, <laughs> but it, it'd either kill him or kill me in the process yeah. Of it. yeah but this match this match was absolutely amazing and we just we were glued to it mm-hmm. and then uh, the all the the ultimate warrior won it yeah and Hogan handed him the belt and like they detested each other mm. and then they ended up in this manly embrace <laughs> a big man hug at the end yes. and then they became tag team partners for a while after that as well mm. I, I absolutely loved it back then yes. but I consider back then that it wasn't as fake and as showy and as yeah and as um as scripted as scripted uh, uh, even though it was every bit as fake it's showy and it's scripted. Yeah, you but you were a kid and you could believe in it. But this is it. This is it. Like my favorite. I remember ravishing Rick Rude. <laughs> no, ravishing Rick Rude. Go and ask your mothers. You know, ravishing Rick Rude was. He was. He was uh, uh, mental. Ra- 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 um, the Randy Savage was great. Mm-hmm. Um, who else did we have? I loved uh, Jim Duggan. Yeah, uh, Rey Mysterio. He may have been. Uh, he came in just at the latter part. Right? Yeah, yeah. You see that? That's where I was really getting into. It was at that latter part where you were you were beginning to see it yeah. move forward into that that newer style. See, the the uh, my favorite of all the tag teams was Demolition. Because <laughs> uh, uh, demolition, uh, they had uh, that that whole face paint, kiss face paint thing going mm. on. Love the bushwhackers right here. We're getting off topic. <laughs> but have we got any kickstarters to talk about? Well, but before that, I just want to remind everybody we yeah. have a fantastic competition this week from the guys at TT Combat. Yes, we have a massive tables worth of MDF terrain. Can to get I away. read out what they're getting? Because I am flabbergasted if, if, by If this. you want to engage your Ace Ventura voice. Okay, <laughs> so what you're going to get, you're going to get in one, <laughs> the, the hospital, warehouse, fast food store, Lincoln building, containers, security office, highway, metro station, Tavington place, Brownstone A, Old Town, warehouse, World War Townhouse set, ruined townhouse set, Vallejo paint station, forebear beacon, shipping containers, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> and for your chance to win, you can comment here on beatsofwar.com, on our YouTube channel, or on this post on Facebook. So anywhere they see this video, yep. get commenting below. Can yep. they comment on all of them? Uh, yeah, you can comment on all of them. So they can get triple, triple, your chances, triple their chances, chances of winning. winning. Yeah, you can go with that. Go for it. But that, for that, it. that is one mega prize. I, I haven't, I don't believe I've seen a prize bigger than that in a very long time. Right. Um, Kickstarter spin. Let's, let's yeah. give people something to, something to, to go and see if it entices them. What, what's on, what's on the cards this week? Okay, so the first one is uh, something from the guys at uh, Penny Arcade and Lone Shark Games. Mm-hmm. And this is effectively their take on what would be a role-playing game, cross-board game, They're using a lot of their comic book-style artwork that they've been focusing on over the last couple of uh, years and things like that. Yeah. Mm. Now, this is set in, uh, I think it's called the Thorn Watch. And yes. the whole idea is that you're not going to be playing sort of bumbling heroes at level one. You're playing the badasses of the forest, effectively. Ooh. And this is all based around a, a little bit like a choose-your-own-adventure style role-playing game mm-hmm, where mm-hmm. you'll get a beginning and an end. And it's up to you then to like create this comic book panel story as you go through. Yeah. So you'll be playing as these characters and you'll be making choices and they might lead you astray onto different paths or they might lead you down to different boons and, and things like that. But the whole emphasis of this is on proper storytelling and really getting into the sort of consequences of your actions and things like that. And I just think it looks like a fantastic take 
on the standard sort of choose your own adventure role playing format. Yeah. And it's another one of those things where they've actually looked towards creating something that could be done as a self contained product, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So it's not something like D and D where you you've suddenly got to sit down as the DM and come up with this massive story or whatever and things like that, which is all good, obviously. Yeah. But a lot of people just want those self contained awesome moments kind of experiences that cinematic feel mm. and that's what they've gone through for with this one and it looks does, really does really that awesome. mean it's like um it's like a game on rails uh, ben in that sense in that the yeah. that a lot of the plot line and story arcs are already there for you you're just moving between them so yeah. it's like your virtual dm in that sense then, in, a, in a little way yes i mean there's there's one character who's playing the role of the judge and they're effectively that storyteller that you'd normally have in a role-playing game but in this they'll be the ones that will dictate the kind of direction you'll go when it comes to these choose your own adventure aspects of the game mm-hmm. and they'll make judgments as to whether or not that was a good idea or a bad idea and things so it still has that role-playing feel but it's structured around a bo- very solid board game mechanic and things which is really awesome and it, it's it's one of those things that I think it's great to see them looking at this from the point of view of you guys are the like mega heroes. You know, you're not the people that have to go and like find X swords every so often or whatever, you know. Yeah. They're actually coming in here with all their gear, everything ready to go. They are the ultimate badasses. They are the ones that have got to take on these big bad guys. So you've got that extra extra thing for yourself where you're cinematically the best at what you do. But there's also this real sort of edge to things where like if you fail you know, nobody else is going to pick up this torch. You're the guys that have to try and solve, solve this problem and stuff. It's really cool. Yeah. Mm. And what is this? Um, it has the momentum system, Ben. Yeah, so obviously, as I say, there's nothing behind the game where you're, like, getting new weapons and new armor and mm. stuff. But they, it, it's all driven by this thing called the momentum system, as you say. And this is where when you make, make decisions and you go down certain paths, these will then affect you in later stories. You might get boons and busts and cards and things like that that will help you later on down the line. But like, say, for example, you save someone, that reward will come back on itself later on down the story. And stuff. Oh, very okay. nice. Very nice. Okay, so, so. when I heard a momentum system, I just had images of myself swinging from a rope and not being fit to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> One of the other really cool, actually, aspects of this is that Penny Arcade really, really love their cosplay and their sort of building around a subject matter kind of thing. Mm. So one of the things they've actually been encouraging is that you dress up as characters when you go to these events Mm -hmm. and you role play out properly as these characters like the Blade and the Greenheart and the Guard and actually like wear your badges of honor effectively on your person. So one of the things they said is that there's this thing called the Knots, which are the way that the Thornwatch are called to action. And if you go to certain events, you might gain these Knots that are realistic, actual things you could get, physical products. And then you could wear them to future games of Thornwood at different events, and it might help you in your story and stuff. So I really like the idea that they're taking it effectively beyond the box and things, which is really awesome. Mm. Yeah. So it, so the whole LARP aspect all starts yeah, to... Yeah, a little bit of LARP. Not being a barbarian. Yes, I'll be a barbarian with my loincloth, and you can be my junior barbarian with your, <laughs> with your mini loincloth. And we can go barbarian together. Or if you want to see it, come across to Beast of War and check out the Justin and Dragons cartoon strip, yes. which is basically everything that we've ever wanted to do in a dungeon in a cartoon strip. And it, yeah. It, yeah. it's well worth, it's yeah. well worth it's, looking at. As far as I know, it's coming out every Tuesday and Thursday is when the new, new ones turn up. Okay, next up we have a Kickstarter by uh, Masigra, and this one is called Nightmarium. Ooh. Yeah, so this is uh, a two to five five player card game, and it's all about um, you delving into your nightmares in this strange scientific facility and trying to construct your nightmares and then beat them effectively, mm-hmm. right? And so it's a very simple card game where you're going to be creating monsters that are made out of three body parts. Now, all of these different body parts will have different allegiances and factions and things like that that will have certain effects, but they'll also have um, effects that will happen when they're completed as well. So it's all about building your monster and then triggering that last part to affect you positively and everybody else negatively so it's one of those games where it's a little bit of a sort of screw your neighbor you know t- yeah. test your luck kind of thing but it's got this nice random ele- element to it where you're making strange weird monsters and stuff like that as well a really neat, interesting little one that um has actually a massive hit in sort of russia and i think most parts of europe as well but they're actually looking to make this into a uh, a big english language version as well yeah well if they have the poltergeist in there um, it'll be three empty cards, obviously, but mm. that'll be my worst nightmare, uh, finding that. Well, how about this? Ooh, look at that. <laughs> so it's a dinosaur head with a gaping maw in its torso yep. and some pustulous legs. What do you yeah. think, Justin? Uh, 
Yeah, How scary? On a scale of one to ten, if you met one of them. <laughs> I'll film a bag scary. <laughs> that's, that's how scary that is. Is that, is that a one hour with white dwarf scary or a two hour with white dwarf scary? <laughs> 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 right. Um, next up, we have one for the painters among you. This is uh, miniatures, holders, and grips. Something mm. very handy. And we have a, a Kickstarter. Now, well, my obvious question is, what's different about these ones, Ben? Okay, so this was something that uh, actually Roman had, had put me onto, and it's a really interesting idea from uh, from Stephen Rath, where he's developed these holders that are really nicely made and very, you know craftily done and things like that to make them a, you know a nice piece of thing to well a nice piece to have as a painter yeah the big thing around it is that they're going to be sized for different types of models and things like that so you've got mm -hmm. nice plug-in bits so you don't have to keep working around trying to pick up the next cork or whatever you wanted to go with with one of the with one of yeah. but they also have um this interesting frame that's built around the top of it as well which will help uh stop the amount of shake you have when you paint oh so this sort of metal bit that you see there will go onto any of the different uh sort of holders that they've made mm -hmm. and allows you to rest your fingers and paint in certain ways so that you don't have to touch the model so you don't like have to touch the model yeah what a yeah. beautiful idea yeah, one of the big things that they've said about this is that it actually heightens your painting skill to uh, like the, the nth degree because you're not going back and looking to correct mistakes all the time because of the yeah. way that this works and things like that. So I think, uh, I mean, if Roman is behind this and says that it's a pretty good idea, I reckon it's something that uh, avid painters would want, would want to pick up. Yeah, mm. so. Definitely, definitely worth a, uh, worth a look. And I like the fact that it seems to be kind of modular. So that it has different kinds of inserts and stuff like that for working with the different types of model. But yeah, there you can yeah. see, actually, Justin, if you bring that up, yeah, yeah. there's how we currently work, where we're resting, uh, you're trying to rest both your hands on the model. Mm. Right? Well, you see you've got one hand pinching, the other one touching the base, and the other hand yeah. sort of sitting up in the air. But it does touch the model. Look at that other, look at that other painting uh, size, or, yeah. or painting method with the green. Mm -hmm. It's very, very interesting. Yeah, very so you, interesting. You've actually got your brush on a solid point as well, I think, is the key to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So scroll up. What's the name of that, that particular Kickstarter for anybody that's interested? It's called The Miniatures, Holders and Grips for Painting and Sculpting. Yeah, and by just Stefan look how well funded it is. Yeah. And then finally, um, probably the big Kickstarter of the week, mm. is uh, Mutant Chronicles Siege of the Citadel. I, yeah. I remember this. Yeah, so this was a game from the 1990s that was a, a massive hit with people. Everybody really loved this, you know, building on the Mutant Chronicles world and everything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but Modifius are back, you know, continuing with their board gaming dominance and things mm -hmm. alongside Cabinet Entertainment uh, to create a new second edition version of the game. Mm -hmm. Now, well, one of the big things that they've said about this is that they're actually going to be going down the route of keeping it quite old school and it feels like the game you used to play in the 90s. Mm -hmm. but they're tweaking a few mechanics here and there. They're going to go into a bit more detail as videos come up and stuff like that. But it's got some massive um, board game designers from the now that are working behind this. Um, so Richard Borg, who'd um, done Memo 44, and he actually worked on the original version of Siege of the, Siege of the Citadel, sorry, yep. is back, alongside Eric Lang, who everybody will know from Blood Rage. Uh, Kevin Wilson, who worked on Descent, is also part of this. And Jay Little, actually, as well, who was part of the X-Wing Miniatures game. Mm. So, yeah, this is going to be a really big project, actually, this one. Um, yeah, in terms of gameplay and things like that, um, the way that it works is you're going to be playing as the different factions from the world of Mutant Chronicles. And uh, you're going to be charging into the uh, the fortress, the Citadel, sorry, of Alaki Alakai. And you're going to be trying to take him down over a series of different missions and quests and things like that. But one of the interesting aspects of this mechanically is that there's no one player who takes control of the bad guys in the Dark Legion. Instead, what happens is you uh, sort of rotate who plays the Dark mm -hmm. Legion throughout the yeah. game. So one person will play it one turn and then it'll swap around and things like that. So you might think to yourself, oh, well, this seems weird. Maybe we'll just go after, you know, everybody else and things like that and leave your guys alone. But it's actually got a semi-cooperative aspect to this because you're obviously all trying to stop the Dark Legion, but you're also... Being trying to play the, as the Dark yeah. Legion, beating everybody else at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's going to have some really interesting dynamics when you play this. And one of the things that adds to this as well is that, of course, there's you know the main objective that everybody's doing, but each of the different factions are going to have their sort of side objectives as well. Mm -hmm. So you might be sending the Dark Legion off to go and deal with heroes in a different part of the facility or something like that, but then people will be like wondering why you're doing that, why are you killing this guy here, why are you killing your own dude or something like that as well. So we're really interested to see where this one goes. I'm looking forward to some gameplay videos for this one absolutely absolutely well there we have it that's your lot for this week um why not come across and join us over at beastofwar.com and uh, join backstage because in tomorrow morning's episode um on the xlbs 
I'm going to be talking about creating my own gaming world. We've been talking a little bit about uh, maps and stuff like that there. So I've been venturing into it. So I'm going to be talking about that at some length tomorrow. Also, remember that we have uh, launched our digital sort of like our, our digital magazine um it's uh, it called reroll mm -hmm. um which is available for backstagers as well so if you fancy coming on over there's a seven day free trial where you can come in check out reroll download it try it out on your tablet and be sure to post us uh, post us some uh, feedback on it because we're we're interested to know what you guys think of it mm -hmm. right thank you gentlemen i will see you back here bright and early tomorrow morning and hopefully see as many of you guys as well we'll see you soon take care guys happy gaming in a world controlled by massive corporations, a steady aim and split-second decisions are needed for your Megacon to complete its goals. Begin your missions at the Mercs Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Venture into the dangerous dungeons of myth as a mighty hero and stand against the darkness. Visit the Myth Hub on BeastsOfWar.com and begin your story.